I'm so done with social media jeopardizing your chance of reaching your potential. You are so, so smart and you're studying so hard, but you're not getting the results you want because social media is literally canceling out all your efforts. I'm tired of Instagram distracting me from being my best self. No, honestly, that is all wrong. I'm done with you and me letting social media be harmful to our lives. And I say that as someone who literally has social media as her side hustle. So today we are going to change that and get our life back together. Hey team, it's Amy. I am so fired up because you know what we're doing today? We are going to break our bad social media habits together for good. You've been commenting how to reduce your screen time, how to cut your social media addiction. And I'm honestly really glad because that shows you have the awareness of its negative effects, like how social media is decreasing your attention span. If you decrease your attention span, you're giving yourself a disadvantage because you're making yourself have to study much longer to get the same results. Not only that, but you're also more likely to make careless errors and miss points on your exams, as well as run out of time for your tasks simply because you're not focused. I am a victim too. People think I am 100% disciplined, but I am not immune to social media's toxicity. In this video, you'll hear three stories about social media. Together, they will change your life. At the end, I will sacrifice something for you, and I guarantee you will cut your addiction. My unique story time approach to this topic is gonna be much more effective than those other tips videos because you and I have both seen enough of those. And how much have you actually gotten off of your device? I pinky promise you watching this video will be you taking the first step into an amazing new chapter of your life that you didn't even know was possible. When I'm in a period of being sucked into social media, sometimes I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't feel like I'm myself. For example, one morning I'm just getting ready for work. My roommate Sean walks into the kitchen and suddenly everything he's doing just irks me. I just felt like I was nagging him on every little thing. Even when I wasn't nagging him, I just felt this feeling of being aggravated and I was so confused. I didn't know why I was feeling so uneasy bringing this negative energy first thing in the morning. I suddenly realized there is a correlation with when I feel this irritable and browsing Instagram for a while right before that. I realized that every time I had this strong feeling of dissatisfaction toward myself and my own life, it always came after mindlessly using my phone. Since Instagram and social media in general is part of my side hustle and I use it to connect with people like you, when I go on there and I'm scoping other people out, I tell myself that I'm working and just getting inspiration from other creators. But really, I was subconsciously comparing myself and getting jealous, like that jealousy was building little by little without me realizing it. That's just so, so dumb, right? Because I have so many amazing things in my life, like Sean is so amazing and I know that my life is so full because I'm living in my favorite city. I have everything I need, honestly, like love from my family and all that stuff. So what even, is there to compare or feel jealous about. Other people on social media, they're just putting out a tiny fraction of what their life appears to be. It's not even what their life really is. If they have certain accomplishments, well, they had different life paths and different backgrounds that put them there. The universe has me in this position for a reason because I have my unique strengths. I have my own unique life path to go on. I went to my friend's apartment the other day. She was so stressed, like her apartment had been hit by a tornado. And then I was like, wow, you would never know that from seeing your Instagram because your fashion is so on point. You seem to have everything together. She's like, yeah, social media is fake. <laughs> but I continually forget. And honestly, it's not only so, so easy for us to forget it's fake, but really to not even care 
that it's fake and to still let it make us feel bad about ourselves. It's bad enough comparing yourself to friends, but what about people you don't even know? If you mindlessly scroll on TikTok, when was the last time you remembered a single thing after hours of scrolling? So you're throwing away hours of your life to gain nothing while giving strangers attention and money. I remind myself this, so at least I stay away from shorts. I've been trying to make it a habit where when I feel irritable, I focus on all the good things, all the good qualities about him, all the great things about me and my life. You need to focus on what your life has because it's beautiful. And you realize that you would never trade your life for someone else's because when you post on social media, you are not showing the lesser parts of your life, right? So other people, when they're posting on social media, you have no idea what kind of troubles and insecurities they're going through. I would never take the risk of being like, oh, I wish I had their life because I don't know their life, you know? I only know mine. However, trying to focus on gratitude, I think that is more just patching up the symptoms instead of tackling the root cause, there's a certain detox that has to happen. Not only does social media and Instagram potentially hurt my relationships with other people, but it can also physically be harmful to my identity and just having my life together. So the second story is I got this pair of Adidas Ultra Boosts which are beautiful and super, super comfy, the comfiest sneakers I've ever owned. And they're not that cheap, even though I did get them on sale. To protect our sneakers, Sean and I would spray this Jason Mark spray on them. So I took them out to our terrace and you're supposed to leave them out for 24 hours. Then I spray the second coat. Guess how long I left them out after that second round of spraying? Five days. And guess what happened in those five days? It rained on that fifth day. It was pouring. It was like soaking everything on the terrace. And throughout that fifth day, Sean was gone. And I was just sitting at home just like, wow, it's raining so hard. Dang, like it's flooding out there. And when Sean gets back, I was like, huh, it rained a lot, right? And he's like, yeah, You're, you brought your shoes in, right? They were supposed to be brought in a few days ago. And I was like, holy crap, I completely spaced. And I didn't even register that things had to be taken in. My beautiful shoes were soaked. I ran outside, but it was just too late. And that's not even the worst part. The worst part is after I brought them in and dry them off, I wanted to do another round of the shoe spray, right? I put them out again. This time Sean's like, okay, remember to bring them in because it's supposed to rain again in a couple of days. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll remember this time. And I didn't again. Fortunately, the rain wasn't as hard, but I literally forgot twice. I just felt like I had lost the part of myself that is organized. That was kind of scary to me, honestly, because I don't, think of myself as a forgetful person and not only forgetful, but I didn't even register that something like the weather should have affected what I was doing. That's a big example, but there are so many other instances where I forgot to do something. And after forgetting, I realized I would not have done this two years ago. If I was this easily distractible or have this much shorter attention span, then I would not have been able to score well on any tests or math competitions when I was doing them in school. So that just made me very just disappointed, honestly, in how I could be affected so much because I prided myself in just being on top of my shiz. <laughs> I fully knew the reason for that lapse in my brain ability per se. I mean, studies show that using social media for too long, it literally shrinks the part of your brain that has to do with important functions like learning and memories and some stuff like that. I'll put the science stuff right here. That's why I always tell you in my videos that you've gotta just decrease the things that are killing your attention span. If I had that much of a disadvantage of using my phone so much, I would not achieve like half the things I could have. It's just such a scary thing. But on the flip side, on a more positive note, here's what can happen 
when you do take a break from social media. This is story number three. So last year in 2023, I went to China with Sean to visit his family and my family for an entire month in March. And literally no one except for our families and a few close friends knew. Like for such a big trip like that, you would think that, oh, at least my followers would know. I would post it on social media or something. But I was really proud of myself for not doing it and honestly not even feeling the need to announce it to the world because who cares so because i wanted to be more present visiting sean's family for the first time and seeing my grandparents when it has been like five years i deleted instagram off of my phone and on march 20th 2023 i wrote a journal entry about how i felt so I'm gonna read a little bit of it right now. It's so cool journaling because it's literally like a time capsule of the person you were and like your thoughts. I feel like I'm more thoughtful, calm, appreciative of everything. I feel like I have a greater sense of wonder with everything I see in the world and am more observant. I feel like I'm more centered and have a firmer grasp again on what matters. Family, health, happiness, letting things go, keeping the peace, appreciation and not judging differences in other people. My memory is better and I'm more attentive. I feel less materialistic or thinking about things I want or what I want to eat or things I have to do at some place. Nothing seems that big of a deal. It's okay that we aren't doing that much in a day. Our enjoyment is deeper and our hearts are content. It's about depth over breath and it's the things that are slower that are more memorable and more meaningful. I'm learning to live more in the moment and I think I'm doing a better job now, feeling fully there and can absorb the experiences. We are so small and the way to have a good life, which is what matters, is to be healthy, happy, loving, kind to others. That's just so beautiful. I read that the other day and I was like, I have to include that in this video to illustrate the beauty that can happen when you choose to put yourself and your own life first. As I'm getting older and I see my grandpa and grandma who helped raise me when I was a baby, I can just see time visibly starting to slip away. And I think that it's a sad and scary thing, you know, seeing people that you love get older and less healthy. Even though it's a kind of sad and scary thing, I think it can also be twisted not twisted, it can also be like um, reframed in a way to be more positive where it makes me realize that our time is so short and we should cherish it more. That visibility and that realization can make us make the right choices now. Since we see that life and time aren't forever, then we actually have this sense of urgency to do something. Because on a daily basis, when we're scrolling, it feels like we can just scroll forever and it doesn't matter and the world's just gonna go on. Yeah, to some extent, but then what happens when it's five years later and you look back and you realize that you've scrolled your time away? I'm not even a big scroller. Like I never scroll on Reels or the For You page or Shorts. And even just me going on Instagram is making this much of an impact on me. So with story number three, I just realized like I want that again. I want those feelings of content and satisfaction again. Like another time I deleted Instagram was when I was preparing for the GMAT, which is a standardized test for the MBA. And the result of that was that I got a super great score of 760, I think. And I got into MIT and Columbia. Every time something great comes out of deleting the app. So why not do it again? Okay. Oh, it's even blacked out right now. <laughs> you see this? gone and actually youtube studio boom i'm also deleting youtube studio not because i'm not going to connect with you guys i'll still use it on my computer but the app has just been another huge source of distraction for me the urge to check it and get these unwanted feelings so early in the morning all that time is just something that's not necessary to be used i realized i wanted you to do this with me in real time but i moved a little too quickly before you could get your phone out so next i'm just going to delete this app too ready do it with me okay click hold it delete let's do it together guys boom easy 
click of a button and you know your life will be better. Like, isn't that weird? Like, you know that doing those little tabs will make your life better. Like, why don't we just do it? Ah! So yeah, I'm actually going back to China very, very soon to see my parents and my grandparents who I haven't seen in a year. The hard thing with being an American-born Asian immigrant or any kind of immigrant is that you rarely get to see your family in ways that other people might, just like on the weekends or holidays. So because of how rare that is, I just want to be fully there. And that's why I'm taking the steps to cut out the things that I know will be harmful. If I can do this, so can you. I want to show you how serious I am about this. I mentioned deleting your social media apps, deleting your phone if you can all the time. Delete your phone if you can. And I just want to practice what I preach even though it's hard, right? I might be missing out on sponsorship opportunities. Like I've been growing a lot on Instagram recently, but at what cost? So if I am benefiting from Instagram and I still feel like it's beneficial for me to delete it, then think about the cost that you will be cutting out by deleting these apps. I did this for you at the expense of some things, but at the gain of something much more important. And most of all, I did this, I deleted these apps for me and for my life and for my family. And that's the way that I hope you think of it. I hope that we reframe our mindset to be like, oh, it's not something scary or something I'm missing out on if I delete these apps, but it's something to be celebrated. And I am so excited and ready for the bliss that comes when I don't have something to be checking all the time. Like, what is the point in that? I wanna ask you a question, okay? What is your reason for deleting these apps. It could be Instagram, it could be TikTok, it could be both, it could be another app, it could be a game that you're addicted to. What is your reason for taking the step to get your life back? What are you excited to do now that you don't have access to these apps? Comment and let me down below. I'll be so excited to read them and also read each other's messages too. Just make this a nice wholesome community of helping each other in our A-team get control again to reach our potential and to fight against the enemies of these faceless companies trying to take our money by pushing more and more ads at us. If you've gotten here watching through this whole video, then congrats. Long form content is better for your attention span. And this video was a little more sit down, chill, slower, intimate, however you like to call it. You're amazing and keep consuming longer form content like this because honestly, there's a lot more value from longer form content as well. No matter what, you need to keep training your brain. You wouldn't let your muscles deteriorate, right? You gotta use it or lose it. Think of social media and those addicting apps as junk food. Now that you've cut out junk food, you still need some calories from somewhere else. Now find an alternative to consume. Create your game plan. Perhaps now when you're bored, you can pick up a book. Whoa, what, what are those? That? Or you can go on a walk and listen to a podcast. Whatever you do, just make sure to have a game plan because without one, you're going to feel deprived and like, ugh, what do I do with myself? And you're gonna go back to eating junk food. You know what? I'll help you out. You can watch this amazing podcast and it will be linked in the description. I'll talk about friendships, the difficulties of growing up, finding your passions, how I'm creating on YouTube. It's honestly an amazing conversation that I really, really highly recommend you watch or you can listen to. It will be linked in the description. So you're welcome. There's your game plan. We don't have to be off social media forever. It still has its benefits and I'm gonna install it again once I have that detox after my China trip. After this detox, we'll both be able to reap the benefits, the good parts from social media more easily. I'm so excited. I've said that so many times now. I need to use more eloquent language. <laughs> okay, really great job. It's not as crazy as it seems, right? Like, you know, just take your life back. Okay, I'm blabbering now. Love you so much. Let me know if you like this video. Please give it a big thumbs up. Check out the podcast. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. And I love you so much. I already said that. Peace.